Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And this is the third attempt to make a recording today. The third attempt, can you believe it? The first attempt was earlier. I suppose it's going to be earlier, isn't it? And I was reading through the papers. Trying to find some positive stories. And I was really struggling to find anything. It was... So, you know... I wasn't really pleased with how it was going. I thought I'd find some funny stories or something like that. And then I got a knock at the door. And then I paused and then I went back and I just... I just stopped the recording 38 minutes in. And then just now... I've probably been talking for about half an hour. And I realised that I'd not pressed the record button. Well, I pressed it, I paused it briefly, and then I I thought I'd pressed record again, and I hadn't. (laughs) And that's not the first time that's happened in my life. It's happened many, many times. Especially... Oh, God, in the past... I remember when I used to record directly onto the computer, directly onto the laptop, uh, through a microphone plugged in and, you know, all that stuff. And then the laptop would just shut down on me, you know, 40 minutes in. Or the, the editing software that I was recording it onto would freeze what I was editing or what I was recording or you know it's just like oh it's just (laughs) so many times that happened and also recording these there's been a few times where I've just been sitting here talking for an hour and I realised I haven't pressed the record button another one I remember I did it and I didn't have the microphone plugged in And there was the other time I did it and I realised that I was in the garden. No, that didn't happen. But it was just, oh, I did do one recording. Honestly, I travelled, well, I travelled. I went into the middle of this countryside area. It's not far from where I lived, but it it was a fair little walk. And I found this lovely little spot and it was surrounded by trees but I could not climb inside, you just walk inside, it was this little space and I was going to record a relaxation session but with the sound of of the birds in the background, like natural birds well, no, real birds it was a lovely summer's day, probably in the afternoon, maybe a Sunday, I don't know, I can't remember, maybe Saturday afternoon, and I'm sitting there, and it's all going really good, there's no one else around, no dogs barking, it's, you know, I've managed to find a really nice quiet space, and then I get that feeling, and I ignore it. I carry on and then I get that feeling and this time it it will not be ignored I had to pack up my stuff and run home to get to the toilet I just needed it and I thought I can't believe it I'd gone to all that hassle I think I might have even taken a chair with me like a deck chair or something to sit on and I had this equipment with me as well. It wasn't like a lot of equipment, but I was really. I probably had a bottle of water with me, 
possibly, I don't know, might have had a hamper with some sandwiches and a coconut or two, I don't know, maybe a board game to play, uh, a vase with some flowers, you know. I had an orchestra there just in case, because I didn't know if the birds would be there. I thought, well, if the birds aren't there, I can have the orchestra play, a little bit of violin, um, and, you know, just it'd be nice, just nice and gentle while I'm talking. But as it is, I didn't need them. I couldn't believe all those people, not one of them had toilet paper, anyway, or a bucket. So I ran home, and... Yeah, that's the whole story, really. But yeah, I've had a few, a few things like that happen. But I'm not sure if I said only listen if you can safely close your eyes. And what's the other thing? It, please subscribe to this podcast so that you can be notified when the new recording is born. And uh, if you like what I do, leave a review on my website. You can leave a written view review or a video review. And uh, that would be really cool because it costs me $15 a month to supply that service. <laughs> and I've had a few reviews and some video reviews. And I don't want to lose them now, so I don't want to get rid of it. But as I said, it costs me money to have it, so... Please make use of it, and even if it's just, uh, even if it's just to say how much you enjoy what I do, <laughs> how wonderful I am. Well, you could just say how boring I am. Oh, how boring! You're so boring. And um, if you'd like to support this free service, go to PayPal.me forward slash Jesson Newland. The link is on my website under Gift Me in the menu. And that helps to pay the expenses of running this thing. Because I can't really afford to do it myself anymore. Um, I've got the time, I just don't really have the money. So I'm, I'm kind of rich time-wise, if that makes sense. And I like to think I'm making quite good use of my time when I'm able to um, but it's the financial aspect of it isn't I'm not pleading poverty or anything I'm just saying just being realistic I'm, I'm on benefits and I don't know how much it costs me a month now how much does it work out the tw- 29 was it £27 for the broadband which to be fair I wouldn't even need if I didn't do all this stuff online um, but the website no the um, the what is it Spreaker where I house most of my Facebook, um, most of my podcasts, I think it's $77 a month for that, which works out about £52, I think, and then there's the website, which is, I think the website is $29, and then on top of that there's the $15 a month for the review section it's a bit much really isn't it but I think because people can leave videos and videos are so powerful such a powerful service but um, I've also got a SoundCloud podcast as well which is $12 a month so it all adds up and so yeah, I work. I was trying to work it out the other day. I think I spent at least twenty five thousand pounds on this free service since two thousand and six. That's including equipment, 
um, advertising. I've done online advertising and everything over the years, uh, as well as all the podcasts, all the websites, the domain names. And that's about the time. I mean, if I if I set a minimum wage per hour for the amount of hours I've spent, and wow, that'd be huge, huge amount of money. Uh, yeah, wow. That's fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, it'd be probably be about hundred. So fifteen grand a year. I easily spent spent forty hours a week, probably a lot more than that over the last fifth fourteen years. So yeah, so it's it's well over. If I was got paid a very minimum minimum wage, I've been I'd have earned a hundred and hundred and probably about hundred and eighty grand down about hundred and eighty thousand pound probably with that and the expenses but the expenses that I paid out about twenty five thousand plus um, which I'm fine about because it's been worth it but it's just interesting and that's over a long period of time as well if that had been over one year then well well, clearly I've got I must have a lot of money in the bank if I could spend £25,000 in a year to offer something like this but it's uh, it's been worth it I think but yeah I know I'm never going to recoup that and I don't care about that but just to cover the expenses that would be nice never bothered me when I was working when I was working, didn't care. This was, I was happy to pay it. But as time's gone on, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't want to pay it anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I posted on my Facebook page an invitation to my 50th birthday party. Yeah, I know I don't sound 50. Have a look at my picture. <laughs> and no, I don't look like a ferret. That's not me. That's Andre. Can you imagine someone looking and saying, Oh my God, he looks like a ferret. No, mind you, but I am quite hairy. I've got definitely a bit of a beard going on at the moment. And... Um, I, 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 I invited, I put a little invitation with, who'd like to come to my 50th birthday party in August? And everyone said no. <laughs> well, they, they didn't say no, they said they can't. Because, pretty, well, everyone don't, doesn't live anywhere near me. Most people live in other countries, like Finland, Denmark. Uh, Australia, Canada, America, um, Scotland, you know, it's, they're just different places along my way. So, I'm probably not going to have a 50th birthday party. Uh, I, I don't know, I mean, I knew, I was kind of realistically, I knew that, I mean, I think if I was, I don't know, I think maybe Rod Stewart would have had a lot of people turn up for his 50th, or I'm trying to think of someone famous that's 50, who is there, probably loads in there, um, Beyonce, she's probably about 50 now isn't she, so... I'm sure if she sort of put an open invitation, she'd like to come to my birthday party. You know, she'd like have probably a few people saying, yeah, <laughs> I'll be there. 
I don't understand it because I'm practically identical to Beyonce. There's so many things in common we have. You know, dancing style, singing style. But I've got great bums. We both love J E Z. Well, I was just seeing there's a there's a, a interview with Tony Blair. He looks really well. Last time I saw him, he didn't look so good. But now he's looking really slick. He's, I think it's almost like he's got grey hair now, but now he's, he's embraced it. And it's a really nice haircut. And he's looking happy. Well, that's nice. He's on the telly. I've got the news on, but it's on mute. He's got Tony Blair, former Middle East Peace Envoy, not former Prime Minister. <laughs> Middle East Peace Envoy. How can he be a Peace Envoy? After what he... Hmm. Oh, well. Uh, da da so I I started thinking about this this party that I had. Pl- I didn't really have it planned. I was just I was just putting it out there, you know. A little bit like a like a really sprayed sneeze, you know, just putting it out there, sharing it with everyone. And I thought, uh, uh. See, I don't really do parties. But I started thinking before I made this recording, and I've not I've not even talked about it, so I'm not repeating what I already said earlier and didn't re- didn't actually record. So I went off talking about something completely random. Which is very very surprising to me. And I was thinking what birthday parties have I actually had in my life? And what have I been to? What parties have I been to? So I'm just trying to think back to various birthdays in my life that hold a memory for me. Now, when I was little, I didn't know how old I was. Sounds like a weird thing to say, but it's true. I didn't know about birthdays. I had no really cognition of them at all. I remember I was pretty five and I came down. I mentioned this in a previous recording probably two years ago. But I came downstairs. I was in a children's home, came down. And one of the people living there said to me, Happy birthday. And I was the last to get out of bed. Never been. uh, I'm just not a morning person. Never have been. I get grief from people about staying up all night. Oh, it's so unhealthy. It's so unnatural. You're staying in bed all night. You're staying up all night. You're sleeping during the day. Then, then. Well, actually, it isn't unnatural. Not for me. This is the most natural thing in the world, to be awake during the night. That's how I am. Um, so, yeah, I don't see why I should... What's the point in going to bed? I know this is a sleep recording, and I know that people, if you have to get up in the morning, you have to go to bed at night, obviously, and I've done that. I've had jobs where I had to get up at five in the morning, four in the morning, Six in the morning, seven in the morning. I've had lots of different jobs where I've had to get up early. I've also had jobs where I've had shifts, different shifts. One week, six to two, six in the morning to two at night. The next week, two in the afternoon to ten at night. 
and then possibly the, the, the third shift, night shift. Now that's a weird one to do those three different shifts. It's hard to kind of get your bearing. The morning and the afternoon are doable. I always found them okay because I enjoyed the afternoon shift, the two till 10. I like that. So I've managed to cope with the six till 10 or six to two rather. But the night shift on top was just too much to do kind of all three. But night shift on its own, my favorite. And I had a job in, again we're going back a while. It was in sales and there was this, they had these different shifts. And you'd come in and you'd basically be given different shifts to come in and on a Friday um, yeah I think there was three shifts and the third shift was a Friday what well, sorry it was Friday the third shift was um, I think the, f the first shift was something like eight to five and the second shift was something like 10 to 7 and the third shift was uh, something like 1 to 9 something like that but the 1 to 9 shift and then every other week you'd have to do a Saturday now the 1 to 9 shift was the best because you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one till nine. One in the afternoon till nine. And then on a Friday, you'd come in um, from, I think from eight to one. And that was it. And you'd see you'd finish early on a Friday and then not have to come back until the Monday at one o'clock. So it's quite a good little shift. I like that because it meant I was going home. Admittedly, I was going and drinking, but that's what I did back then. But I was going home, chilling out for a few hours. So although I wasn't on a night shift, I didn't have to get up in the morning early. So I'd be getting up probably 11 o'clock, go to bed probably two or three. Yeah, probably about three o'clock. So I was up half the night, which is good. I'd be home by 10 or half nine, you know, sort of by about half hour, 40 minute walk. So I used to get a lift home with the boss anyway, give me a lift home sometimes or to Sainsbury's and I was get some bits and and I have the whole evening I could just chill out from like 10 to 3 5 hours of just watching some telly, reading making videos making audios, whatever I wanted to do beautiful and I was, and I was working at the same time so I had that space, there was no one around to talk to me, no one wanted my attention because they were all in bed. So I could just get on and do what I wanted, uninterrupted, and just enjoy it. And I was getting paid, you know what I mean, so I was, I was getting paid, I wasn't rich, but I was on about 25000 a year, so it was best paid job I ever had actually at the time um, it's the most I've ever earned in a year but it's just because of the bonus the the, the basic was I think 13,000 and then the bonus then on top of that uh, used to be in cash um, still taxed you know and all that stuff but it would give us cash every every week so we'd get paid monthly, the basic, which was probably £800 a month. Or, yeah, probably about 800 
and the bonus would be anywhere between 80 sometimes 200 a, a week depending on how successful the salesperson was I mean I probably I wasn't the top person at that place uh, so I was I did well but I wasn't I didn't earn like massive amounts I think one of the people there was earning about 37,000 a year so it's like way more than me but having that cash every week and then getting the basic and every month what a great way to earn money you know especially well for the people there mainly it was younger people that were just out you know going out having fun every Friday lunchtime they get paid cash and they didn't keep anyone that wasn't selling so everybody was getting paid nobody didn't get any money if you know what I mean everyone always exceeded the sales target because they're the only, they're the only people that kept their jobs and oh, I was lovely you know sometimes I don't know I think the most I think I did have like £220 one week but that was like an exceptional week but I've, and I think they had like some kind of double bubble you know you get <laughs> which they used to call it but basically you get double the sales for one sale they sort of say in the evening because and the evening was good because that's when the most sales were because there was less people on the phones in the evening and there's more people at home phoning so not only was I on the best shift at that time because I got more people I get more sales plus I didn't have to get up early in the morning it was going really well I was really pleased with it and then they took me off the shift they took me off because they needed people to cover the daytime I was never been so angry so uh, and then I got a job in a different department and that was good as well but a lot less money they said to me um, I had a job interview and it was basically listening I had three job interviews in that company the first one was in the sales and I got that job thanks to my friend who put a good word in for me and I didn't like it I didn't want to I didn't want to do it anymore so I applied for three jobs the first one was in customer service and I was interviewed by my manager the sales manager and she said no I don't think you're she told me she didn't think I was capable of doing the job she thought it would be too too much for me <laughs> it's like okay yeah, I don't know and then I applied for the uh, renewals department and they said no I had a job interview there as well they said no it's like in house interview I said oh come on please and they said nope I said but it's easy renewals is easy it's easier than sales it's just going over the information they're like no and so I don't know they didn't give me that job and then the this bloke was really nice and he used to pop upstairs and he was in charge of listening to all of our calls well like probably six calls a month for each salesperson each renewals person each customer service person and they had a little department um and they'd listen to the calls for all, all the different people on the phones to make sure that they were doing the job properly. And I just asked him, how was, how was that job? Because it, it was a good good job. And he said, why, is a vacancy. He didn't say it like that. He didn't, he didn't say, there's a vacancy. He said, there's a vacancy. I said, really? He said, well, why don't you apply then? 
And the reason he said it is because I was the most compliant person there. Sounds like I'm bragging, but it's all true. Mind you, is bragging is bragging when you show off about something that's true. Well, I'm bragging then, I suppose. Yeah, I don't mind. It's not like it's something impressive, is it? It's like bragging. You know what? I can wear six pairs of socks at the same time and still fit into my shoes. That's bragging, but it's not impressive. And uh, so I applied for this job. And they gave it to me. But before they said, well, you can have the job, but there's a problem. And I said, what's that? They said, you do realise there's a pay cut. I said, "Uh," because I didn't know how much I was going to get paid. I didn't. All I knew is I wanted to get out of the sales department. I just needed to do something different. And they said, "Um, yeah, it's... I think the basic was fourteen and a half thousand a year, maybe fifteen thousand. Um, but they had an annual bonus for um, the admin department and maybe the customer service, not the renewals and not the sales because they got their bonuses separate. But those that weren't on a bonus um, got an annual bonus shared based upon um, profits, I guess. And she said, uh, your basic's going to be, well, basically, your basic is going to be 11,000 less than what you're currently getting. Because she, she had access to my my earnings because she again it was the sales manager that was interviewing me because she was not only was she a sales manager she was high up in the company in the in that in that uh, building and she said are you sure you you know for the at least I said well yeah we think you'd be really good at the job but a monkey could do it I thought oh thanks and I said um, no, seriously, a monkey does do it. Are you okay to work with a monkey? And I thought they were joking. And I didn't realise the position was actually inside a zoo. I was, uh, but it was okay. I got, I got through it. Bit of a journey. Uh, there was no zoo in that town. I had to travel all the way about 30 miles. None of this is true. And... Um, they said, are you sure you don't mind taking a pay cut of uh, like £11,000 or no, £10,000 a year pay cut? And I said, there's a bonus though, isn't there? They said, yeah, but even with a bonus, the most you're going to get is maybe 17000 17, You know, they might get a couple of grand a year extra bonus. And I said, yeah, it's fine. So I took pretty much a £10,000 and the bonus was a gamble. I didn't know what I was going to get. So £10,000 pay cut in order to do a different job. One that didn't involve me getting up early in the morning. Well... For me, getting up early in the morning to start at 8 o'clock is getting up at 6. And when I was starting at 9 o'clock, I was getting up at 7. Now, I know there's not a lot of difference, but there is. <laughs> For me, there was a lot of difference between 6 and 7. Oh, oh, there was a difference. And also, the job I had was really relaxed the new job I had so you know when I had the sales job I'd get in and straight away phone calls coming through having to talk to people and you know be in my best behaviour and you know or go through that process but with this new job 
I got to sit down, have a cup of coffee, you know, get all set up, prepared, have a little chat. And I had a target for the month as far as what I needed to do. You know, I needed to listen to six calls. Well, actually, I think we shared it. It was me and another person did it between us. So we listened to, for example, three calls each. Or it might have been eight calls, four calls each. But let's say three calls each for each person in the company. And it'd be, I don't know how many people it was, quite a few. And then what would happen is my boss, who was in charge of our department, there's only three of us, he would listen to our calls. So part of his job was to listen to, um, I don't know, a few of our calls a month, just to make sure the calls that we'd marked, re listen to it to make sure that we'd marked it correctly. And so that was that was my job. So it needed to be done by the end of the month. And also part of the job was to give feedback um, to the people as well. You know, to go and speak to the salespeople or... Um, not always. We don't always, didn't always give feedback. But if they, if they kind of didn't pass the call you know and maybe they lost money because of it then we'd sort of give them feedback and go and sit with them and talk to them and stuff or speak to the team leader and that it's uh it was quite weird because there was one of the team leaders who I got really well with and they restructured the whole place took on loads of new staff for the sales floor in fact, the sales floor, I think, was two floors. Or what? I'm not sure, I forget. But it be- became a lot bigger. So much bigger than what it was when I was up there. And they went from having one um, sales team, sales leader, you know, the sales boss, with his assistant, to having three, no, four team leaders. The four big, four teams. So they employed two people from outside and employed two people from inside. Two of the top sales people. And the, the sales manager got promoted to become the manager of the whole building and his assistant became the sales manager. And he'd been there for years, a long time. So and it was quite weird because the one of the sales team leaders used to come down, we'd have meetings with him and he'd say, We've got to make it harder, I wanna make the questions make it harder for them and make it so they do the job properly and and then we'd mark them and we'd, we'd change the way we were doing it to suit him, what he wanted. And his team would be failing because they weren't asking the questions correctly. And then he'd come down moaning about it. So, yeah, but it was your idea. You know, because I'd always say, I don't want to make them harder. I think the questions are, I think you know, it's tough enough as it is to pass all the, uh, jump through all the hoops. I know, because I did it. And I knew, you know, that it didn't, it didn't need it to be any more complicated. But he, I think almost like he wanted to stamp his authority, make, you know, but it kind of backfired. But it was lovely, I really liked him, so he was, he was a nice bloke. But it was kind of, I suppose it just happens, doesn't it? In those kind of office environments. And, um, I don't know how I got onto talking about working in that place. It's just a night shift, yeah, working nights. I've had night shift jobs before. The first night shift I ever had 
um, was I worked in a factory I did a few yeah um, I might have done some night shifts in this meter factory when I was 18 but I actually did a night shift in 1990 when I was I suppose 19 at the time and I really liked it it was really good and uh, I started at 10 it's was, it was like a proper night shift 10 to 6 that's a proper night shift you know 8 hours start at 10 have 2 breaks during the day or during the shift and a lunch break which was probably about half hour I don't think it was a whole hour but it might have been I really don't remember and the environment was so clean because it was all uh, it was meters electric meters but we were kind of working on them so we had had to have all this static uh, de-static material on us white coats um, and just you know to make sure I think we had things over our shoes just to make sure that um, no static got inside the electric meter and it would be taking them apart testing them refitting them um, well build, building them really I suppose and it'd be a uh, that's really good I liked it I got on with pretty much everyone there and it was just a really nice environment it was a lot quieter because there was less people working at night and than during the day during the day there was a lot of people there probably three times the amount of people during the day than at night but it was a 24 hour operation so um, because I used to work there during the day as well because I worked there three times and this was the third and last time when I worked night shift and it was really interesting to see the different angles of the jobs that I had because before I was packing meters into boxes but this time I was helping to make the meters or to put them together admittedly I was just I did a lot of screwing um, so just like just putting it would literally be a conveyor belt just screwing in a screw and it go along and screwed in another screw and then I'd move to a different part and you know uh, so maybe I'd be checking the um, you know the little numbers that go around to sometimes be fixing those numbers in or checking that they worked or maybe taking it apart because sometimes it'd be, it'd be a section of stuff that didn't work and needed to be taken apart again because they didn't they didn't waste anything so and that was an okay job I feel I earned about £160 a week doing that and back in 1990 that was okay uh, yeah I was more than happy with that and the compared to 1991, 1992, 1993, where I was earning, still earning about £100 a week. So I was, you know, earning a lot more in 1990 than I did for most of the 90s, actually, which is a bit ridiculous. So that was, you know, but I liked it. And then they changed the shift. They opened a new factory next door. We all had to have 
two weeks off holiday, which no one complained about, because it was extra holiday, you know, because they closed while they moved everything into the new factory. And so it was paid holiday. It was a great place to work, really. And um, in fact, my dad worked there. He did. My dad worked there in the 70s. Uh, he worked for that company in London, I think. And then he moved to that place. He moved to it. He moved out of London and continued working for the same company, but in a different part of the country. Um, yeah, I think he did that before he became self-employed. But anyway, I worked there and they changed the shift patterns and said you have to go back onto the day shift, 6 till 2, 2 till 10, alternate, no night shifts, because they basically stopped night shift for most people because I didn't, I guess I didn't want to be 24 hours anymore, they didn't need to be, whatever the reason. And, yeah, I just sort of left, you know. But um, the next night shift job I had was working in a bakery. I had a night shift. Well, I did all kinds of shifts, but I uh, did night shifts there as well as day shifts. But night shift was better. I preferred night shift. And although when you're in the bakery, it could be day, it could be night. There's no, there wasn't any windows. There wasn't any. It was just like one big sauna. It was the whole time. I mean, it would be the same heat indoors. You know, whether it was winter or summer, it'd be there'd be no difference. The only difference is if you go outside in the winter, you'd probably you probably still feel warm but um, the so that was another night shift job I did then 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 I did night shift I had um, yeah I got a night shift I, I got a security job the first job what that this first um, placement they gave me wasn't nights. It was at Canary Wharf. It was during the day. But loads of hours. And they asked me to stay one night, I think, and for a couple of nights, and I, I fell asleep. But then they moved me to a nurse's home, which was night shift. And that was... I don't know, something like 10, 10 to 8, 10 in the evening to 8 in the morning, or it might have been 8 in the mo 8 in the evening to 8 in the morning, it might have been 12 hours actually, something like that, um, and I did that, and I remember I did, I did a month without a break, without a day off. And I really needed a day off after that. But I liked it. I liked the night shift. And I didn't need to go to sleep. Didn't need... Because there was people around sometimes. And I was working with other people. Because it was in a hospital. So it was all connected to the hospital. And um, there'd be nurses coming and going. There'd be... The security from the emergency ward would be there as well. They'd pop in and say hi and have a drink, coffee or tea. Um, and sometimes there'd be others. They'd all, they'd all hang around, you know, as well as uh, some of the student nurses. And I, I liked that job. It was all right, actually. And... Uh, So then, what is it? I got another night shift job. 
and the security. This time it was a, a printer's. It's really famous printers and they did I forget the name of it now but he what was his name mm. well anyway they did like heavy metal magazines computer magazines um, oh, lots I mean maybe like loaded I don't know that Magazines that were really, really popular back in the 90s and even like going forward into the 2000s and maybe back in the 80s as well. But um, of course magazines don't have the the same, uh, I guess the same audience as they used to. But this was a time, I mean the internet didn't exist at that time so it was printing and it was the the building was full of computers full of computers and it was they'd have all the magazines and the different ones and I'd look through them and think wow there's so many they'd even have magazines in other languages so I forget the name of the person but it was very big you know in the printing world so I worked there from I think I did a 15 hour shift so that's quite a long shift so I started I think I started at something like 5 in the afternoon and finished at eight in the morning. Or I might have finished at nine in the morning. It was something like that. So I'd get home and pretty much go to bed and get up and go back to work. That was kind of um, my routine. And I didn't work every day of the week though, so I'd have... I'd work maybe five days a week, maybe six days a week, but I'd always have at least one day off, generally. But they'd always, they'd always be asking me, can you do a shift? Can you do an extra shift? Can you do a shift somewhere else? So if I wanted to, I could work every day of the week, pretty much 24 hours a day. But of course, physically, I wasn't able to do that. But I could have done if they'd have left me alone to go to bed. Would have been a bit smelly, but um, but with that that job in the office with the the printing firm, it wasn't like a printer's, you know, with all the heavy machinery. They basically did all the graphic design work, and then I guess they just sent the orders to the whoever printed it somewhere else. And sort of emailed it to... Uh, emailed? See if there's no internet. But there was email, wasn't there? Was there? How could there be emails about the internet? Ah. Unless everything was still sent by... By telex... Or by smoke signals, I don't know. Carrier pigeon. I really don't know. Um, what I do know is the lady on the reception, she had an Apple computer. Well, it wasn't hers, but with the company. And that was on the reception. It was a really nice reception. All kind of marble and really nice nice to stay it was where I sat when she left but she was there with me probably for I don't know like half an hour or so there was like a crossover and she she started showing me a few things on the computer how to use it and how to put things into the bin 
you know, on the on the screen, and I was like, wow, I never touched a computer before. And this is 1996. Never, never had any interest at all in computers. Even though we had them at school, kind of, they were the ones that you had to like put your own code in for to get it to say hello to you. And those little floppy disks and stuff like that. <laughs> I just, nah, it's too much like hard work. You know, I can just say hello to myself. It's much easier. Besides, I had a calculator and it took me about three or four years to work out how to put in the right amount of, you know, to get, well, basically to get the calculator to spell out boobs. You know, it took, took quite a while, so I thought maybe computers isn't for me. And, uh, turned out they were who'd have thought it I actually ended up being fairly proficient on a computer but I think that's partly because well after, I mean, if you spend all day working on one for years and years and years you get you get to know your way around you know like even my, my typing I can kind of type in the dark. I can. I can turn the light off, and I can type on the laptop. And then I turn the light back on, so I can type. None of it makes sense, you know. This is the word, no proper words for anything. But I'm just saying, I can. I can actually put my hands on the keyboards. It looks like I'm typing. <laughs> but um, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. What other part, what other night shift jobs have I had? Um, see that night shift I didn't enjoy as much the last one I had because I was there on my own. The staff was there till probably about ten, because those people that were working they're really hard. Then they'd leave, so everyone had been gone by ten o'clock. So I was in there till uh, probably six when the cleaners came in. And I, you know, I had to go and do a little walk around and check stuff and all that, you know, make sure all the windows were locked and the doors. And the thing is, if all the doors are locked and you've already done a patrol, you've already looked around. You kind of don't need to go back and look around again in an hour's time. Because you're near the front door. No one could get in. There's no other way into the building. So yeah, I just... Uh, it was a bit boring, to be fair. And... I think now, with all the technology we have, like with the internet, with laptops, phones, all that stuff. We did have mobile phones back then, I just didn't have one. And they weren't nothing like this, they were just phones. And I... Yeah, I mean, imagine if I had a night shift job now, and if I had a job where people didn't touch, they didn't go anywhere near me, or not touch me, if they left me alone, to just be in that building for 12 hours or whatever. I could make loads of recordings. <laughs> Couldn't I? I could just do that all night, every night. Um, but yeah, not all, you know, a lot of security jobs aren't as easy as that. And I had some that weren't. I had one job. Uh, one, one place that I was sent to was it was a bookies um, uh, for those that don't know what bookies is um, what's the proper word for it book license book like a gambling shop yeah gambling shop 
and it was it was on this rough estate, housing estate, in East London. And I went in there, had all my uniform on, because I always had to wear a uniform, security uniform. And the local people in there, because there was a pub next door, and there was loads of blocks of flats, and it was, you know, I was very much, I suppose, vulnerable, really. And they said, oh, you're the fourth, fourth security guard I've had here this month. And he said, yeah, we keep getting robbed. This is what the, the staff were telling me. They've been robbed like twice in the last month. And the staff don't stay. The security guards don't like it because they keep getting beaten up. I was like, oh, great. And they, they were just basically making fun of me. And they said, what would you do if someone came in here to rob the place? I said, I'd do nothing. They said, what? I said... I'm earning £5.50 an hour. I would do absolutely nothing. In fact, I'd open the door for them so they could come in. After that, they liked me. Not the the staff, but the customers. I don't think the staff were too impressed. But the customers seemed to respect me after that because I wasn't trying to be all like action hero man. It's like, no, I don't care. If they want to come and rob the place, let them. Not when you get shot for <laughs> for five pound an hour, no. Because you know, believe it or not, I was not in the SAS. I have no military training. <laughs> I was just wearing a costume, a security guard costume. Um, and I said, to, I got a lift back. So I lived there and I lived back. I said, don't ever send me to a crappy place like that again. It's ridiculous. And he was laughing, my boss. He found it hilarious. Honestly, he didn't even know where, he didn't tell me where he was taking me. He said, I just need you to come here tonight. We're short-staffed. Can you just, just here? It's only for six hours. And it was in the evening. It was like from, uh, like four till ten or something like that. I was like, okay. I was like, no, I don't ever want to go back there. <laughs> Please. I mean, partly I was thinking, you know what? An armed robbery would probably be a, an improvement on talking to the customers because they were just hassling me, giving me just making fun of me the whole time I was like leave me alone I'm a professional I'm a security man look I've got a uniform on I'm wearing shoes I cleaned them last week they used to be clean shoes I'm wearing a (laughs) I'm wearing a strap on tie you're glad I said the word tie, aren't you? No, a clip-on tie, rather, not strap-on. A clip-on tie, so that if anyone grabs it, it just pulls off. So if someone wants to pull me off, I pull, pull off. Strap-on, pull me off. If someone wants to, if someone grabs you, and they pull away, you can just pull away from them and say, ha, 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 it's not a real tie. Ha, ha. But on the same side, it's a little bit embarrassing walking around with a strap-on tie. You know, it's it's like being being seven years old again. Because those are the kind of ties I used to wear when I was seven. Because my parents didn't trust me with... I don't know why they didn't trust me with a real tie. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know what other night shift jobs I had. Um, Did I have any other night shift jobs after that? Uh, No, that was it. So 1987, 1997, uh, was the last time I had a night shift job.
yeah, it's the last time. Last time. So. So, being awake at night feels right to me. It's not a weird thing. If I'm awake during the day, so if I went to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, and I woke up at 9 I almost wouldn't know what to do with myself because my my creative time is night time a time when I can make recordings when it's quiet but also it's just it's just a, a better time for me just I don't know why just the way it is uh, so yeah, I think if I'd if I'd have, if that factory that I worked in in 1990, if they'd have let me stay doing night shift, and well, they're closed down now anyway, but if they'd still stayed open, I possibly would still be there, still doing me night shift. Isn't it weird? probably would never have learned any well, anything <laughs> maybe I'm sure I would have learned something I, I'd have got interested in something although I was I was interested in comedy and stuff but you know who knows I might have ended up getting interested in hypnosis anyway there's no way of knowing is there might have happened Maybe this is destiny, destiny, destinoi. Maybe. Anyway, I'm going to go because this is time to upload this to the internet. So thank you for listening. I was going to talk about parties that I've been to. I'm going to have to do that another time. So I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. And remember, remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Do something nice for yourself today. Lots of love.